<laughs> but good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us for today's webinar, where we'll be going through the UTS Bachelor of Accounting Co-op Scholarship here at UTS. Firstly, I would just like to acknowledge that we are located on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And the Gadigal people have cared for the community, land and waters for generations based on their deep knowledge of their country. We pay respects to their ancestors, elders, and acknowledge their status as the first people of this land. I'm also conscious that we're zooming in from so many different places. So I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the locations you're dialing into as well. My name is Michelle Cook. I'm the director of the Bachelor of Accounting program. And we are also joined by our two first year students, Sean and Annabelle, one of our third year students, Georgia, and two of our alumni, Hamish, who is a graduate at Macquarie Bank, and Lauren, who is a manager at EY. In the background, but also joined by the A-team, which is Karen, who works with me on the BAC program and will be answering any questions that you come, will come through sort of during the session. So what are we presenting on today? Just have a little overview. So we're going to talk about what BAC is, Bachelor of Accounting, that is. What are your course structures if you get in? Looking at our sponsors, how our internships work and also career options, the application process, and then getting to our Q&A. So one of the questions I've always asked is, well, how is BAC different to the BBiz, which is the Bachelor of Business at UTS? I always answer and say, well, the Bachelor of Accounting is like a degree, a business degree on steroids. It is intense. It is faster than uh, the normal Bachelor of Business. You have to major in accounting, but we will go into majors later because you, it, it, you will do more than one major, but accounting must be one of them. It's a full-time uh, position with scholarships that are given, about 51,000 up to uh, over your three years, and it has two six-month internships. So all these things we will go through, and unlike the Bachelor of Business, the Bachelor of Accounting, you also have to go through an application process which has an interview, online assessment, et cetera. But don't worry, as I'm saying, that's a lot of information, but we're going to touch on each one individually as we go through. So you might be saying, let's talk about, you mean, why accounting? Well, in Bachelor of Accounting, the reason we do this major is because it's a mission statement of ours to really create a generation of business leaders and global business leaders using accounting as its foundation. And do we fulfill this lofty ambition? We certainly do. So I'm going to read to you about some of the things our alumni are doing. So we have the CFO of Lendlease, CFO of GPT, the head of finance of Westpac, the CEO of the National Centre of Indigenous Excellence, the finance director of the Iconic, the CEO of JB Ware. We even have the CFO of West's Rugby and the Vice President of McKinsey Transformation. It goes on and on and on. And what I'm always interested in is that we also have the Director of Business Processes and Analytics at Paramount Pictures in California. If you want to check on that, please do. Look in LinkedIn and see what these amazing alumni are doing. In fact, they all are BX. They all say that the skills they learned in accounting help them to achieve their success. So while they may not have a role that says accounting in their title, all those accounting skills they use in everyday positions. In fact, a third of our alumni are overseas. So accounting is the language of business. And I know people say that all the time, but what does that mean? So to further break it down into sort of human speak, what does a business need? A business simply needs more money coming in than money coming out. And an accountant ensure business viability. They're sort of like the advisors to the business. I call them the doctors of industry. They examine, they advise and prescribe ways to keep businesses healthy and functioning. But I'd be really interested, just to thread Annabelle for a second. Annabelle, what are some of the things you thought accounting would be and what has it been in reality? Oh, hi everyone. Um, my opinion of accounting has definitely shifted in the past five or six years. I come from a family of accountants and I swore off it. But the more I read into the accounting industry, the accounting degree and how accounting is in business, the more I fell in love with it. I usually describe it in three words and that is um, dynamic, innovative and future focused. 
And I find that this degree just proves that more to me every single day. Um, the more, like when I say the more I learn about it, the more I love it. I'm not joking. Every single day I'm on a lecture or tutorial and accounting is honestly in every single part of a business. I want to go into business partnering. So that's not really money accounting, like calculating each little number. It's teaching people about money and how to use it better and how to use their finances to benefit a business. And I think you need to take a 360 view on what is accounting and how can it can help you in the business world. Thanks, Annabelle. And I'm going to throw to you, Laura, now. Could you add anything to what Annabelle has said as an ex BAC and from an industry perspective? Yeah, no, I think they, they were really great and accurate points, Annabelle. Um, from my perspective, so I've been in industry uh, as a as aside from the internships that I did with BAC for uh, nearly four and a half years now. And what I've really learned most is that accounting has absolutely been the foundation of the work that I do no matter I'm in a consulting role at the moment and so no matter what kind of client that I'm being put on or what kind of project I need to complete the the actual essence of accounting and the core skills that I learned from the BIAC program and through the CA thereafter actually informed a lot of what was being what what I need to do to, to solve problems and accounting is no longer about you know just number crunching or looking at what we call debits and credits or recording it's now thinking about the analysis behind why things are the way they are in a business and and that's honestly such a critical skill to be able to to understand what is happening and how to improve overall business performance. That is, you've encapsulated that so well, both of you, because, you know, and also it's one of those myths, isn't it, that because accounting isn't about math. It's about problem solving and innovating and also being great global citizens in this world. Um, if you can use a calculator on your phone, you'll have enough math skill to come into accounting. Interestingly, you can work anywhere in the world, did you know, with accounting, except North Korea. But I'm going to do some fun facts. At Qantas, do you know they, they actually employ more accountants than pilots? The FBI have more accountants than agents. And the person who invented bubblegum was an accountant. Yeah, I just threw that last one in just to show how fun we are. But getting back into it. So it is a really competitive course in BIAC. And we do have high expectations of you. So... It starts very early in January, where you go into an intensive course we call Fast Track. So Fast Track, you, in first year, you'll do two subjects in about six weeks. After that, you do five subjects a semester. Most university students do four. And the reason we do that is so that we can fit in your two six-month internships during your program course. Um, we expect students to be I suppose, continue to develop themselves as rounded people. And we expect the high standards, both personally and professionally. There is an expectation you perform well academically and give back to the university. And what I really like is also always give back to each other. It's a privilege to be in this course. And so to develop yourself in this way suits UTS as well, because we believe in developing really socially responsible students who not only have in themselves will have a positive social impact as students, but also in the industries that they will go to. I ask you now, Sean and Georgia, like I say that and people get really scared about the workload, but how did you find the workload? Yeah, personally, of course, the fast track uh, period was difficult. It was our mm -hmm. first sort of few weeks in university and we're already covering such incredible amounts of content, of course, covering like two subjects in like six weeks was quite hectic at times. But what I've found really with the Bachelor of Accounting is you've got such a tight knit, like sort of cohort and group of, that's there to support you through it. Everyone's there, everyone's helping each other. And that really does assist with um, making the workload very manageable. After Fast Track, I've found that if you can get through year 12, you can definitely get through the university workload. Um, covering five subjects at the minute, Yes, I'm in university around three days a week, but I'm also combining that with social commitments, with work commitments, and I found that completely manageable. So, yes, it's hectic at the start, but you do find your your rhythm and your grain, which makes it incredibly manageable. So, um, just going to Georgia, uh, reflecting yeah. back on your BAC journey, what can you say about the workload? 
<laughs> it's a very good question. Um, I'm definitely not going to sugarcoat it coming from a third year. So I've been through two whole years of university, all online, not to mention, and I'm halfway through my final year. Um, but as Michelle has mentioned, the workload is a bit more intense than the normal uni student. So as Michelle mentioned, we have to take five subjects instead of four. However, echoing what Sean said, um, we're very, very close-knit cohorts. Everyone works together and supports each other, which is absolutely amazing. And it's not something that you usually get out of a larger cohort, such as completing a Bachelor of Business, as you'll have to make friends yourself and you're more likely as well to make individual notes. So it's more timely rather than sharing notes. And this means it's you're less likely to have the opportunity to create a larger study group as well, which is something that BIAC greatly facilitates and we're so lucky to be able to be involved in. I think another benefit going off um, the workload of being in the BIAC program is that the benefits of the program itself, such as the industry experience, the connections you can make, um, severely outweigh the workload, um, taking additional subjects, et cetera. It's just a, man a matter of managing your time and making sure that you do stay on top of your work, which is similar to the HSC. Um, you'll be coming out of the HSC this year, so you all have experience. And I guess looking back, the workload definitely wasn't as hard as I anticipated and is more than achievable. So if we can do it, any of you guys can do it. <laughs> and you're doing very well. And Lauren and Hamish, how did you prepare for juggling multiple commitments while working? How did we prepare you, I should say? How did we prepare me? Yeah, I think um, it was when I got, by the time I had got into, you know, full-time work, uh, it was very much like BIAC had made me almost accustomed and climatised to being able to do a lot of commitments. So it got to a point where I was actually able to, you know, uh, have my own personal commitments and prioritise so much better. Um, and it just became the norm. And I feel like, I feel like you do, like the others have said already, you do have the support and you are able to, the, the mentality and the culture, I suppose, of BIAC really facilitates one where um, it's, it's a, like competitive natured, but very high spirited and, and very much motivating. And my peers 100% motivated me every day when I was in BIAC and I had them to, to lean on. We had assignments together, but it really made it quite enjoyable because we had, we had each other, like I said, so I think that that's that's the key takeaway, and I think um, it probably sounds hard, like it sounds like it's a lot to manage, but the way that the program is structured it allows for you to really flourish in your internships because you have less workload for university, uh, and in those university peak periods where you're just focusing on uni, again you have your, your support to your peer support to like help you get through it. So um, all manageable. So many people have come out the other end, so nothing to worry about. <laughs> True, we've had eight hundred go through, so yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. And Hamish, did you have anything to add to that? Sure thing. Thanks, Michelle, and hello, everyone. So, yeah, just, just to add on, on what everyone's been saying. So I think at various times throughout uni, I was, part, I was a really involved member in two societies, studied four or five subjects at the same time. I had a casual job tutoring, and I also volunteered once a week, and as well as play sport as well. Not competitively, not that much of a sportsman, <laughs> uh, but definitely uh, just socially as well. But, uh, yeah, no, I definitely agree with what everything what, what everyone has said, I think the old adage of work smarter, not harder really comes into mm. play with BX. So you're always looking for opportunities to collaborate with others. As it has as been touched on, it's a really small cohort of 30 people and you become really tight knit. So, you know, just looking to leverage off notes from everyone and just like maybe one person's really good at a subject that I'm not as good in and vice versa. So you can help tutor each other as well. So, yeah, you really just help um, each other through it. And you definitely have time for those uh, social commitments outside of uni. Um, once once you get to your routine down pat, it is a bit of a shock to the system coming from high school because you do have to have a bit more structure and whatnot. But no, I think coming out of uh, the BA program and into full time work now, it's pre prepared me really well. And I think, um, in fact, sometimes it's maybe a bit easier because I'm just doing my one job. I'm not part of the society <laughs> anymore, so it's re I'm really just able to focus my attention. But no, certainly, I wouldn't change anything or any of the involvements I was I did do during uni. Um, loved every minute of it but it certainly prepares you really well to prioritise your tasks and also make time to um, rest and recharge yourself because that's equally as important. Absolutely, Hamish. And, you know, those are the things we so emphasise, like not only in your student life and BIAC, but really throughout your professional life is how you do balance that. And balance, we call it balancing all your different buckets. So your work bucket, your life bucket, your relationship buckets. And how do we make, how do we really try and develop those uh, time management skills in yourselves? So moving on just quickly, 
let's have, I'm going to have a little look and we're going to have to discuss about course structure. So I, I'm also always asked, so is this, like, do we only do accounting? Well, there's a, no, you don't. You do do other majors. I'm going to get the students themselves to describe those. But to break it down, a major is actually eight subjects. So in the beginning of your university course, beside the fast track subjects you do, you do all the core subjects. And those core subjects are very important because it gives you an overall breadth of knowledge of, of, the business, of business, like economics, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then you can choose any other major. And it's just to give you a better foundational sort of knowledge into the industry. But you do do one major in accounting, which will be those subjects. So I'm going to ask Georgia and Sean and Annabelle. Georgia, first of all, uh, so university terminology, we go into that a lot. Yeah. Uh, could, what, what uh, are you doing? And also, can you just break down that terminology of a major and a sub-major, et cetera? Of course, yeah. I'll um, break down the terminology first, just so everyone has a bit of an understanding of what I'll talk about next. Um, so I guess the key terminology comes down to majors, sub-majors and electives. So within a bachelor's degree, you must complete a major. So this is simply a major area of focus in your studies. Mm -hmm. So as Michelle briefly mentioned before, a major consists of eight core subjects that are usually interrelated with one another in content mm -hmm. and they're studied in sequence as well. So within the Bachelor of Accounting, you'll take place in a compulsory major in accounting. So following the same principle, this will consist of eight interrelated accounting subjects. Um, taking a step down is now a sub-major. So a sub-major consists of four subjects, um, which is half a major, <laughs> clearly. Um, and here you can specialise in subjects such as finance, marketing, HR, management, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Finally, the last piece of uni terminology is an elective. And basically, an elective is an individual subject that you can take. So the maximum number of electives you can take within the Bachelor of Accounting program and in any um, degree, basically, is four. And this can range from subjects such as innovation, health, mathematics and sciences. So BIAC's really, really great in that sense, as you can tailor your degree, the rest of your degree, aside from the accounting major, um, regarding sub-majors and electives to your personal preferences and interests. So now delving into my, I guess, uni life sort of thing, I'm actually taking my final accounting subject for my accounting major this semester. So that means previously I've completed seven subjects in accounting and I'm topping that off with my capstone this semester. Um, I'm also taking place in a sub-major in finance. So that means and I've completed that one as well. So I've completed four finance subjects, which completes my sub-major. And then next semester, I'll be taking place in four electives. So I've chosen electives that suit my personal preferences. So one of them's in management consulting. One of them is in Aboriginal studies. So I love learning about cultures and stuff. So I've decided to study that. Um, and a couple of them are to do with marketing. So it's really amazing that whilst BIAC, you do have to complete the compulsory major in accounting, which is extremely beneficial um, for anyone going out into the business workforce, you're able to tailor the rest of your degree to suit your own personal preferences. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think that's one of the beauties of UTS is that flexibility of study and the amount you can actually do because learning is about pursuing your passions as well as just you know, trying to create your employability skills. And George and Sean, I'm oh, sorry, my apologies, Sean and Annabelle, do you know what you want to specialise in? Um, I know I definitely do. My main specialty that I want to go into is a sub-major of business innovation and financial management. Mm -hmm. And I feel like through this degree and having my accounting degree, I'll be able to create accounting processes and financial operations um, that creates efficiency in business and consumers to make a more effective business. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, you will be the business doctor. So actually <laughs> being an accountant. <laughs> and how about you, Sean? Yeah, well, currently I don't have a concrete idea of exactly what I want to do. Um, my areas of interest are sort of around that finance area, but I think what will aid my decision-making is really the internships that will be going on 
um, later in the year. And I think really getting that practical insight into industry um, will allow me to understand what I enjoy. And so then I'll be able to tailor my degree um, towards those areas. So. And it's great to make an informed choice that way too. We're very beneficial, but we will go into internships later, everyone. So don't worry about that. So I'm just, and Lauren and Hamish, like why, what did you choose? And why did you choose it? What did you enjoy about it? How to prepare you for the current role? Just the whole gamut. What are your thoughts? Sure, thanks. thanks, Michelle. So I guess um, we, I did the major in accounting as it is the Bachelor of Accounting. I also chose to do a full major in finance. And I really enjoy my finance major, especially the opportunity to do free elective subjects. So I did my one elective in derivative securities, another one in ethics, and the third one in investment banking. And I chose the full finance elective um, mainly because, um, as Michelle was so rightly put at the start of the presentation, business is fundamentally, you've got to have more coming in, more money coming in than money coming out. And that's essentially what finance is, right? Like a firm's ability to raise and then allocate capital to generate a return on an investment. So I really enjoyed the breadth of um, studying the finance major and, it, and especially the ability to um, specialize in areas which I thought were more tailored to mm -hmm. um, I guess like where I was heading down a career path, for example, I landed a graduate role at Macquarie Group, um, which is an investment bank. So then I therefore chose to do an elective in investment bank because I'm like, oh, may as well, you know, uh, learn all this in uni before I actually start the role. And so then also as well, I use my accounting um, major every day as well as I work in finance. So the other day I got a question from the business about, oh, can we like capitalize this expense or do we have to like expense it? And you're able to um, look at your notes uh, if you wanted to do from good old accounting yeah. standards and regulations. One of the subjects in the accounting major, and it, it exactly points you to, um, you know, ASB 138, paragraph 57, where it outlines the uh -huh. six criteria you need to, um, you know, that you need to be able to capitalize and tangible assets. So it prepares you extremely well. And I'm always looking back to those subjects. And although it was my favorite subject at the time, um, it definitely uh, prepared me well for the role I'm currently in. I, I, I dare say a lot of the students online could agree that they do some subjects that maybe aren't their favorite, but they just have to get through. And Lauren, I know you went in a different path for your major. Do you want to go through that? Yeah, sure. I actually chose business law. So I was really keen to see the interrelation between law and accounting and, and kind of business. I think that both, both laws and accounting are, are two things that in no matter what industry, no matter what organisation you have, both of those are going to be very prevalent. So I was I was keen just to get an understanding of, of how it links together and, and how to um, really structure my thoughts and structure my writing and, and be able to apply legislation and, and sort of understand the impact of it to, to a business. And, and that coupled with the accounting major has really set me up to uh, prepare documentation like board reports, for example, for some of my clients. So it's been very beneficial. And, you know, I think, you know, it's such a great mix between our governance, like ethics and also accounting. Yes. Which they're very interlinked. Yeah. So there is, there is so much you can do. I know some students go and exchange and uh, some of them are doing very unusual subjects. <laughs> One subject in Italy is how to mix pasta sauces with correct pasta shapes. Ooh. So there are many ways you can go in your learning uh, with the course as well, besides doing an accounting major. So um, life goes on beyond the classroom, everyone, as we all know, and the social component is so important. And I think that's become even more prevalent during COVID. I think we really value connection and meeting people and becoming what we talk about a lot, like the BIAC family. It's so valuable for our students. And it, they keep mentioning, I think you will hear from the panel, how close everyone is. But um, I think, so what do we do to try and develop that? We have camps. Uh, they, we have a program called We've Got Your BIAC. Yeah, it's like a dad joke, I know. Uh, but it's about a buddy program so that there's always someone there to assist you. We've now made family trees with that where alumni are also involved to just further your networks and also all the other support structures you have. We have leadership development. Um, the students have just had their BIAC ball so there's so much to do because we want to support you, not only academically, but also mentally. And then with that, to help your health and also personal growth. So I'm going to throw to, to uh, Sean, uh, Annabelle and Georgia. Anyone can jump in. Did you know anyone before starting Bria? Yeah, well, personally, I knew a few boys who were in second and third year um, that had gone to my high school. Mm -hmm. um, so 
and I was also fortunate enough to have my sister who was also in the program at the time. And I think knowing people that are in BIAC was really valuable to me as just talking with them really aided my discernment and my decision making yeah. and really convinced me that I wanted to actually do BIAC um, and make the most of it. So, yeah. And how easy was it to make friends, Annabelle? Oh, I personally knew no one in, in the program except a past graduate. Um, it was extremely easy. When on our drive to camp, um, we were going to Kangaroo Valley and we had to carpool with someone else. That made it really easy to make friends. And unfortunately, I live in the, up on the Central Coast, so it's a four-hour drive. Uh-huh. I got hitched up with a few people and it was a good little road trip and we got groceries on the way and listened to music but it honestly is such an amazing bonding experience I forgot their names about 50 times <laughs> um, but I can say they are my closest friends so and um yeah no one really believes us when they we say that but it does happen everyone and Georgia what would you say are the benefits of such a close-knit group yeah, I'd definitely say the benefits of such a close-knit group is the social element, as on the screen, social life. Um, it's We all go out with each other, not just individual year groups, um, it's like first years and first years, seconds and second years, um, but we all go out like and integrate with all the year groups, all three year groups, even the um, graduates, such as with our BIAC Bull, all year groups are invited, including the graduate cohort that graduated the pre- previous year. So all four groups are able to mingle with each other. And it provides a really, really fabulous sense of community, which is great. And mm-hmm. something a normal bachelor business student wouldn't get to experience. They don't get immersed within this 27 group of people. On the very first day of uni, you meet such a great group of friends who will become friends for life. Um, I can definitely say that I've met some friends for life that will stick with me through years and years to come, even if we don't end up um, in the same graduate firms. But as I've also previously mentioned, and Hamish also briefly touched on, note sharing and studying collectively is also a major benefit um, of the BIAC program as your peers can help explain complex topics to you and vice versa. So it definitely makes uni a lot easier and especially with the massive, not the massive workload, but the enhanced workload compared to a Bachelor of Business student, as I previously said, um, it is, it does take up a bit more time and does become a bit stressful at times, but you do have your BIAC community, BIAC family with you, and you're always there to help each other out. So it's fabulous. And I think that was really made um, really notable by COVID, that we did have, you all had such a support network with you. You knew each other. It wasn't like walking into just a great big cohort of people and um, not being able to speak to anyone or get assistance. But uh, Lauren and Hamish, I mean, you've been out for a little bit of time now. How did you find the social component, Juni? And do you still maintain the connections now after graduating? Yeah, 100%. So I found, I'm very much being described as a social butterfly. (laughs) And I think we are very much um, catered to that. So yeah, the social aspect of uni and uni in general, like I think UTS, the the, the university itself at UTS is is really great. And it's, it's designed for, I think, uh, collaboration, just the workspaces itself, the uni societies, the the type of work and, and the, you know, the way that tutorials and lectures are run around, it's kind of very much tailored to that. Uh, and so, yeah, from a social side, you know, some of my best friends are still from those that I, I met at BIAC and I speak to them very regularly. I actually have a, two, two of them are going to New York uh, very, very soon. And so I have a farewell on Saturday for them. Oh, lovely. And, yeah. So there's, there's lots of, it's really great because I think you grow together and you know you form these these relationships when you're 18 years old and then years down the track and, and I hope for years to come you you really watch each other grow and, and do different things with life and, and your careers and so it's been it's been an amazing to watch my peers really flourish and um, yeah I'm looking forward to doing it more but you know absolutely loved the social side there was so many there's always something on every every time and, and you really just have you know your be access as your crew to be honest so it was good and what a fantastic network yeah, uh, yeah, not to mention across so many industries. Yeah, across across um grades as well. So it's you know first, second, third, who who you go through with the program and connections that will will probably last, networks that will last for a long time in your career. Which means a lot. <laughs> and how about you, Hamish? No, definitely. I've made some of my best friends in BF. So 
uh, to illustrate with this one example. So I graduated at the end of 2020. And so mid last year, about 12 or 13 of us went on a particularly memorable camping trip that I organized. And so we still go away together and everything. And um, to be honest, we don't see each other enough just because I guess, you know, people have got CA study and uh, other work commitments and whatnot. But no, we certainly make an effort to catch up. And I always love spending time, um, you know, even if it's after work, getting dinner or whatnot, just catching up with the BA uh, crew. And um, yeah, like we've even got plans. Um, one of my friends owns like a burger truck and um, unfortunately can't make a lot of the nights. However, he is having a night off so we can go and have like a steak night with um, five of us friends. So very much looking forward to that. That's in the works in the moment. The Facebook group chat has been formed. So we're making great yeah. progress there. But I think, um, yeah, you definitely certainly do maintain your, connect maintain your connections after graduating and they help you um, both professionally and, um, and, and socially as well. So can't, can't speak highly of that. And although I don't speak to like everyone um, like constantly in the 30 person cohort that I graduated with, I'm still on, you know, we're all on great terms and we always reach out for a coffee or whatnot. So although you've got your, like your really close friends that maybe you see a bit more often coming out of the course, you still have that 30 strong network plus um, the other years as well, um, as we briefly touched on. So that's 90 people you're in the same cohort with as you go through uni that you just have those connections going forward. And um, and yeah, you never know, you meet some um, random people at work who work BX as well. So it's, it's definitely a small world out there. It is a small world when it comes to BX. I agree totally. But um, in saying that, you know, when you're talking about the workforce, we can't forget about our sponsors. So our sponsors are, are, range across industries and sectors, as we call them, so different organisations. Do you know they've given over $50 million to the program over 33 years? And it just shows how significant their investment is in developing a pipeline of talent for industry. So with that, we also make sure that our student events uh, for sponsors and also students where they can meet and further their professional networks. So we have awards nights, welcome ceremonies, we have BIAC and sponsor career only expos, there's industry visits, in fact the first years are going through guest lectures where they're being addressed by some of the CEOs and CFOs of those companies. Just an amazing experience that I don't think happens in every uh, university cohort. So all about students getting to know organisations and getting sponsors, getting to know uh, the BACs, and also they go into preferential grad recruitment. So I think Hamish mentioned that once he got his position in Macquarie Bank, which they get at the beginning of third year, then he could then tailor some of his subjects to maybe better suit his, his I suppose, future career. So I mentioned, so, so what has your experience been uh, like in networking events as first years, Annabelle and Sean? Oh, I think it's been absolutely amazing. Um, with the every Thursday, we have these um, events called guest lectures and we sit in a room and we have guests from each one of these companies. And some of the most memorable ones for me was mm -hmm. Dexas. There was two lovely ladies coming from Dexas and they presented with such an amazing presence in the room. And one of the most impactful things they said was no matter where you go in Texas, you can always find a BAC. Yeah. And it just really hit me like how amazing BAC is and how it can excel my career and me as a person. Um, and it's so exciting to go to all these events and other events that UTS runs. And I know for myself, I'm in women in business and they had a, a international women's day luncheon. And I was sitting next to, head of financial controls on one side and head of operations on the other side. I'm like, cool, I'm 18 and this is happening. Yeah, you're six months out of school. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's how, so about, amazing. Yeah. how about you, Sean? Yeah, I'd very much agree. It is an incredible opportunity to network with CEOs, CFOs of some of the most iconic um, companies in Australia. If you have a look there, I'm sure you'd notice um, and know a lot of the companies there. And to be able to talk with the uh, top managers from these companies like as he said just out fresh out of high school is just something that you won't find anywhere else um, and you know with the networking opportunities you might think like these top managers they're big scary business people but in reality they're really just there to have a chat you want to learn about them they want to know about you and it's just very easy going and very conversational so I think it's been certainly a highlight of the Bachelor of Accounting so far. And how about you, Georgia? You're in your second internship. What's your experience with sponsors and how beneficial this is? 
Yeah, so within BIAT, we're definitely extremely fortunate enough to be involved in so many networking and events that we don't even have to organize ourselves. Michelle and Karen are the driving forces behind this. They're absolutely amazing when it comes to organizing like networking opportunities and events. So we're super privileged to be involved in this. Yeah. But yeah, on top of um, what Annabelle and Sean have mentioned, in second year, you'll take place in graduate panels with all the sponsor organizations. And this is more of like an open forum where unfortunately for <laughs> third years now, um, we have to do this all virtually because of COVID. But you can ask industry professionals questions about their daily work life and learn more about them as people and how they have progressed in their career, which is absolutely amazing. Um, also within all three year, years, as well as when you graduate, so in your fourth year, <laughs> we have a yearly um, welcome ceremony come graduate, um, the graduate cohort, like, I guess, yeah, farewelling them. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Here, um, all sponsors are also invited as well. So they celebrate mainly the new cohort of BX coming through. So this is a great time to connect with all sponsors and really show your presence. But these events have been so beneficial for me as it's personally made me feel more confident talking to colleagues during my second internship. During the first internship, you're a bit, not on edge, but it's a bit scary. You're entering the business world for the first time. You're not too sure what to wear, how to react, how to speak yeah. to people. But um, in your third year, you really build that confidence through these networking events and as well as build your personal brand, which is something that we also emphasize in BIAC a lot. So yeah, by all these events, it's they provide you valuable insights into your future careers as well in the business world. So this is something I'll never forget and have been so grateful for to have at uni and you will not get any experience like this through any other program other than BAC. And Lauren and Hamish, did it help you in your career, like preparing for your career? Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's the little things that form the foundation of, you know, day-to-day -day operations for yourself. And it's things like how you set up your day and how you prioritise tasks and how you interact with key stakeholders, which are uh, skills that that you, you carry with you. And that, you know, when I reflect on it, a lot of the things that I learned in my first internship, I still carry with me today and 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 bring out in, in my day-to-day, -day like day-to-day -day networks and operations. And so it's, it's a super important role in helping you complete your tasks and, and helping you to really grind out those day-to-day -day tasks and like not feel kind of pressured by the, the new environment or, or whatever, because you're just already used to that environment and that really sets you apart from, you know, other potentially other people that are sort of very new to the environment. And so having that edge on getting, getting an understanding yeah. of the environment and how to work is, is very good. So, so true. And Hamish? Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, funny you touched on this, Georgia, actually. I still remember, Michelle, your advice um, going out to these industry visits. Always match your belt and your shoes and don't <laughs> wear white socks. Uh -huh. I think even I still, <laughs> I still remember that advice because um, that was the first time I kind of dressed into a suit and actually went into an office building, which, um, you know, you see in movies and whatnot, but it's definitely a different environment just being in one. So I think, um, yeah, just interactions with the sponsors and those, um, you know, industry visits really just mm -hmm. help prepare you just like, you know, how to help thrive in an office environment. So, if, um, you know, just how to be confident when you're going up to someone a bit more senior than yourself and asking them a question and also how to show um, initiative as well. So say if you've got some sort of process you want to find out more about that impacts your accounting, you can actually reach out to the business yeah. or reach out to these people for a coffee. And I guarantee like nine out of 10 times, they're more than happy to have a coffee with you. So I think just having that confidence um, again to approach yeah. people is really good. And I think as well, just being able to reach out and ask more about the companies um, to, for graduate roles as well. So I remember like I applied for several companies and um, yeah, no, got, got great reception from the sponsors and they're more than happy just to take a couple of minutes to talk to you because um, you learn about companies just from your website, but it's completely different talking to someone who actually works in the company day to day. And you're able to sort of like see, you know, what's the boots on the ground um, or like what's it actually like the day to day in this company. So no, it's, it's really beneficial and um, the sponsors certainly play a big part in the student experience. That's so true. And they also, you know, in doing those coffee catch-ups and they really, I think, um, help to mentor you through, which is quite amazing. The, the investment they have in this program is quite incredible. So thanks for that. And I know now we've been talking about internships. It's been coming up all the time because it is a huge component of this degree. So when you graduate from BAC, you actually come out with one year of complete work experience. And how do you do that? Well, you have two industry internships for six months at a time. So in your first year, 
you will do an internship that will last from July through to December. In your second year, you will do an internship that will go from uh, January through to July. Now, the important things about the internships is that it's really crucial to develop those professional experiences, uh, as has been mentioned so many times by the beautiful panel. So most universities will get, you know, in courses, will only you'll only be able to get six weeks. But because of our sponsorship base, it means that they offer you internships for a longer period of time. That can also eventually be put to your professional designation, but we can always go back into that a lot later. Uh, in, in So six months out of school, you will get an apprenticeship, apprenticeship in accounting, that's what I call it, because it's all about learning at one of those sponsor organisations. And I think the beauty of BIAC is that uh, it's different to a cadetship in that because of the breadth of sponsors we have, it means that you go to two different sectors. Now, when we talk sectors, maybe you do your first internship in banking. The second might be done in audit. So we do encourage you to go to different sectors and really learn the breadth of accounting and see maybe where you fit in or you don't fit in. <laughs> what do you like? What sort of really pushes your buttons? because there is more than one type of accounting. And I think you should look at that really carefully. So when we look at um, Lauren and Hamish, where did you intern first in your first and second year? Yes, yeah, so in my first year internship, I uh, interned at PwC Australia in the audit division. Mm -hmm. And for the second internship, I was in Brookfield Properties. So yeah. Fantastic. Oh, sorry. And, uh, yeah, and what did you learn from the internship? Cool, yeah, so I was going to say, um, so at PwC, as I said, I was working as an insurance intern, and um, my main client was actually Westpac, so Westpac Banking Corporation, and yeah, it was a special, especially interesting year, because it was 2018, and helping do the four-year audit, and um, those that might uh, remember, 2018 is the year of the Banking Commission, so um, no, definitely a uh, really interesting time to be auditing them as a client, uh, and yeah, and Brookfield as well, just doing general corporate and property accounting mm -hmm. for their real estate investments. And um, Lauren... Where did you intern first and in your first and second? Intern? Yeah, so I, I was at EY, Ernst & Young, doing assurance as well, so audit for financial statements, which is basically making sure that what companies say, they how much money companies say they made, that they actually did make it, so it was investigating the books. Um, I didn't know that until I got there, so <laughs> you're already one step ahead of me. And then I, I, I interned secondly at Westpac in statutory reporting. So on the other side of preparing the reports that will then go out to shareholders. The question I think I had when I was in your position was, you know, what would I actually be doing from a day-to-day -day internship perspective? And obviously that will inform whether or not you want to apply for the, the BIAC scholarship. But uh, to, to put to put in, in a nutshell, and you do many, many things, but you are you are very much an integral part of the team that you're put in. You're not there to do copies or you're not there to, you know, assist with kind of the admin stuff. You are absolutely relied upon. You support, you know, audit. For example, when I was in audit, I was looking at the cash balances. And so yeah. what that required me to do was go to bank accounts and make sure that the cash actually existed. So that's the type of day-to-day -day work that you sort of get to do. And you will absolutely be guided and led by your managers and by the teams within that organization. And then on top of that, you have a lot of the fun events and corporate stuff that, you know, is just a, an added bonus to be able to support you with your networking journey and understanding what kind of roles actually exist in the company that might inspire you to then want to chase them. So that's why the internships in BIAC are so attractive because you're able to not only prepare and build your, your skill set and your belt, but also be able to, to figure out exactly what you want to do. And, and it just is such a win-win for you. And I'm going to throw this to you as a surprise, Georgia, <laughs> because you are in your second internship. Yeah. Uh, so where did have you interned and what were the expectations of you as an intern? Of course. So in my first year, I interned at Coca-Cola Amateur, which is now Coca-Cola Your Pacific Partners. Um, as both Lauren and Hamish have mentioned, there is a lot of responsibility when you go in. You're not doing the copy runs, all the admin sort of work. Um, no, <laughs> definitely not. Um, I was sitting, basically, if you look at the CFO, I was sitting like pretty close under the CFO so you're very high up there in the business um, but in terms of responsibility that you were given 
and how to like manage it, all that sort of stuff. Um, all your BACs will also be going through the same like process at the exact same time. Um, so it's an important time to communicate with another, one another um, and support each other through the process because, of course, I had no prior business experience before entering into my internship at CCAP. So, yeah, it's you get thrown in the deep end, which is what BIAC is. I wouldn't say it's all about doing that, but it's a great learning experience and you have to make sure that you immerse yourself as much as possible to get the most out of it. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I'm currently at PwC and also enjoying that as well. So both FMCG industry and auditing at the moment. So completely different, but they're both amazing. And any sponsor, if you do become part of the BIAC program, you get placed in, is absolutely incredible. And the amount of experience and knowledge you gain out of it is unlike any other. So I'm going to jump along a little bit here, just in the interest of time, which I just thought, oh, goodness me. So um, how do you apply? So we have a, a, a quite a rigorous application process. We have online interviews. We have, so we have an online application. Then we have um, interviews and a group assessment. We've been really lucky because we have made sure that we try very hard to make sure interviews and group assessment is done um, face to face, so not online, because we want to meet you and we want you to meet us as well. Uh, the online assessment is just an application. Uh, when we're, and also the interviews is with the panel and the group assessment, which sounds scary, it's just meeting up with four people and having a discussion on how you'll solve the problem because we're looking for passionate people in business with a real genuine desire to pursue a career that is accounting-based. So people always say, Michelle, so what are you looking for? Well, I think to try and sum it up, we want people-centric people, we want good communicators, we want people with good, great interpersonal skills, team capabilities, as well as the ability to think analytically and critically. And we look for engagement beyond the classroom. So not just your grades, we want to see what you've done in your community, uh, in your sporting life, the things that make you you is the most important thing to us. I also say every year, and it's true, one of the most important things we look for are nice people because then you will always get on with anyone around you and you will really contribute to corporate life. So entry is by interview and people, not ATAR. So we want to see your leadership skills, it's all there in the, in the online application. And then um, successful interviews will be made an offer after ATAR results come out. So people say, well, what is the ATAR cutoff? Well, there, there, there isn't one because ATARs, it's the interview, the group assessment, what you've shown us in, in that realm. And then after that, we look at ATAR to have the final determinant. So if you did really, really well in your group assessment, really, really well in your interview, then uh, you will be given a conditional offer. And then the top eight hours in that conditional offer are given a place in the program. So that's why there is no real cutoff point. So really quickly, Annabelle or Sean, how did you find the um, application process? Because I know it sounds scary. Oh, I was a bit freaked by the application process to start mm. off with, but... I do think the number one thing with it is ship it day by day and write something that best reflects you and be yourself in the application process. If you're a, a complex person, show that in what you write. Yeah. If you're a, a simple person who puts their best foot forward, show that in what you write. But you've honestly got to put your best foot forward and be yourself throughout the whole process, no matter what you do, no matter what you write. If you put in your grades, what you do in work experience or community experience, just be yourself and show them who you really are. And that way we can see who you are and the right people will get into the program. And Sean, what advice would you give to prospective students looking to apply this year? I'd say definitely if you have an interest in that accounting, finance, business area, just do it. You have nothing to lose um, by applying uh, for the Bachelor of Accounting and yet you have everything to gain. It is such an incredible course and I'm so grateful for it. And yeah, absolutely. If you've got the interest, if you've got the motivation, um, just go ahead and do it. You will not regret it at all. So, yeah. Absolutely. Because uh, no doesn't hurt, but not applying is like, I want to win lotto, but I haven't bought a ticket yet. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
Yeah, I agree with you totally. So I'm going to say this just really quickly to all of you. Um, why did you choose to apply and accept a position in the BIAC program? Uh, maybe we'll start with Lauren. Hello, yes. Uh, why did I choose? So thinking back, I chose to apply for BIAC because when I saw the sponsors, I was really blown away. I thought, wow, I knew, I knew like a lot of them were very familiar companies as they would be to you. And I, I thought I'd love to have the opportunity to work with them and they'd set me up for my career and they absolutely have. But um, reality when I fast forward to that and I know we're short on time so I'll keep it quick but when I fast forward that I think um actually while all of that happened and was true it was the long-standing relationships and the fact that it made me better at um at my interpersonal relationships it and just and it you know it it taught me a lot about like a lot about everything like about humility and the importance importance of just being a nice person etc and like if if you take one thing away from the session it's it's really that like be show yourself like we've said but but remember at the end of the day that everyone is just kind of human and like and yes. and what this is doing is is very much a development course for yourself and I wish like I think I wish I had known that that was that would actually be the benefit rather than all oh, the the fancy you know companies that would be on my CV like that's the truth so um very very forever grateful for BIAC it's absolutely shaped who I am and and my career so um I 100% would recommend it and and you should uh, yeah definitely apply tonight if they're open <laughs> it is <laughs> And would anyone else like to comment on that? Why did you choose to apply and accept a position in BIAC? Definitely, Michelle. So um, I actually found the BIAC course in one of those really uh, thick UAC booklets that you get, that least Sporting <laughs> yeah. University course in Australia, because my um, school didn't promote the course. But I saw it said like something like leading business course in Australia. I'm like, wow, that looks really interesting. And when you see that line, plus the scholarship, plus the one year's work experience, plus you can mm -hmm. do this all in three years and you come out with some great friends, like it's it's a no-brainer really. So I'm, I'm just really thankful that, you know, I found that ads that I actually went through and put my application in because to be honest, I wasn't sure if um, I would get in. So I definitely would echo what Michelle said, you know, just have a crack, put your application in because you never know what's going to happen, right? And I think, um, yep. yeah, I, I think, yeah, don't, don't sell yourself short. So you're coming out of the program, as Lauren said, yeah, you, you definitely do have some great names on your CV, but you've got friends for life and you've got a really good, um, uh, you know, social skills and network, especially go out there and succeed in the business world. So, no, I think if you want to do the leading business course in Australia, this is it. So, um, definitely throw in your application and, yeah, no, be good to see everyone there. And, and Georgia. Yeah. What, why, what did you choose? <laughs> yeah, I basically just chose BIAC due to the work integrated learning style of the program. So the one year's worth of work, one year's worth of work experience, which is basically given to you, which is absolutely amazing. You don't have to seek it yourself. And the knowledge you gain from completing that one year's worth of work experience is invaluable. You'll use it for the rest of your life, which is really important. Um, and I guess why I decided to accept it was I knew I wanted to do it throughout the whole of year 12. So when it came up and a position arose, I accepted it straight away <laughs> on the phone as Michelle would echo. Um, I was extremely excited and couldn't have accepted it sooner on the phone. <laughs> and um, just all of you in very briefly, if you had the chance to tell your AGC self about BIAC, what would that be? Really quickly, just a couple of words. Let's start with Annabelle. Um, I know for myself when I did get the call, I know this is a bit longer than a few words, but I was absolutely blown away and I wish I would have just told myself to believe in myself more and to say I do deserve to be in this program. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, I'd say definitely for my year 12 self, keep the balance, be involved in all the community service, all the sports, all the teamwork and leadership things, as well as the academics. You need the balance, you need the mix and the hard work pays off in the end of the day. So, yeah. Hamish? Yeah, I was, I was going to say what Sean said as well, but also as well, you know, like you put in so many hours into your HSC, but it's great to see that end result as well. So, you know, it's one extra motive. I could go back and say, like, you know, just keep on writing those Hamlet essays. They're going to come towards something. And, um, you know, keep making sure you keep up with all your social life and balancing too. So, no, it's, it's absolutely just such a great motivation. And, um, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, exactly. I echo what everyone else said. And, and Georgia? Yeah, I'd basically just say every opportunity that you don't take is a missed opportunity, so why not apply? And last but not least, Lauren. I'd say that it's going to provide some of the most transformative years of, of your life, so, you know, just have fun with it, really. 
Thank you so much, Deborah. And really, it is a, a life changing and a life empowering uh, decision that you make if you do get an offer. And I mean, I think, you know, just to recap, just even the ability to design your degree as you would like to do it, beside having an accounting major and then really developing yourself in that is just an amazing thing that UTS does offer.